Hi guys, my name is Kiva and this is DIY with KB. So today I am doing two DIYs in one. First, I'm showing you how to make oversized mats for artwork or photos. And then I'm showing you how to make the squiggly line art that is so popular right now at Restoration Hardware and Anthropology. Um, to get a mat like this, normally an oversized mat, it's gonna run you about $100. But this project, including the artwork and the frame per piece is only $10.75. And I'm telling you, it looks identical to what it looks like in the stores. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, be sure to keep on watching. Before we get into today's video, I just want to say if you like this video, please remember to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and check me out on Instagram at kiva.brent. Also, if you're interested in virtual design consulting with me, be sure to click the link down in my bio. Now let's get into today's video. Okay guys, so for today's project, you're only gonna need a couple things and we were keeping this at very low cost because that's kind of the point of this project. Of course, you could buy a nice big matted frame like this, but it's going to run you at least $50 and that's like with a big mat like this and we want, I mean small mat like this and we want a really small one, which is a couple hundred dollars at Restoration Hardware. So we're gonna start with a 16 by 20 Riba frame from Ikea. This is $9.99, then we purchased this from the dollar store. No, it's not for its decor purposes, but if this is what you're into, that's fine with me. Um, but we're gonna use this as like a guide so that every single hole is the exact same size. We also need a utility knife or a craft knife. So this is a craft knife. This is from the dollar store and it comes with all these different blades. This works very well. You can also use an X-Acto knife, which they also sell at the dollar store. Um, it's really just up to you. On my trial one, I use this one and it worked just fine, but we'll just see what happens. You also need a pencil. The most important thing you're going to need is a poster board. So at the Dollar Tree, they sell two poster boards for $1 and this is the key to success because this is what's gonna end up being your mat. And last but not least, which I think is under my frame here, it is, you are going to need a ruler or something that has a really nice right angle. This is also from the dollar store. I happened to pick this up the other day and it's really great. And if you're doing this project, I'm gonna encourage you to work at the edge of a table because you're gonna make sure that everything is perfectly level. Okay guys, so step one, once you have disassembled your frame, is to um, first take off the sticker and try to do it well because this is actually the side of the mat that we are going to be using. This is what's gonna face outward because we want our mats to be matte, M-A-T-T-E, um, and this side is more so that than this side, which is nice and glossy. So then flip it over and grab the mat that actually comes with the frame. You are going to want to line them up and we are just going to trace the outline. We've traced the outline, which is not necessarily essential because what we're actually gonna do is we're just lining this up with the bottom here. And we're gonna use an X-Acto knife. So the first time I filmed this, I used a craft knife and it, I don't feel that it was sharp enough. So we're gonna do it this time with an X-Acto knife and we're just going to see how it does. So I'm literally throwing my whole body on here because I don't want this to move. And then I am cutting like literally guys, like my whole body is on this cause like I refuse to let it move, okay? All right, now we're gonna do it the other direction. Again, people, body weight. Me versus an Ikea mat. Who do you think will win? Okay, let's see how we did. All right, and that's just what we're doing here. We can go back over our line using the X-Acto knife. Give your line a little bit of help. There we go. And 
there she is. This line actually doesn't have to be perfectly straight because you're not gonna be able to see the edges. And definitely never do what I'm doing. Don't cut towards you. Um, cutting myself with stuff actually doesn't happen that much anymore because I'm always doing projects, but safety first always. I'm trimming this off because I am a perfectionist and that's a good way to waste time. I'm gonna give it up. All right, now that we have our piece of paper that is the same size as the mat that we got from Ikea, we're gonna still work on this um, glossy side and we are going to use this as our guide here. Nice. Right now, it is exactly where I need it to be. So I'm just gonna put some pressure down here, draw a line on this side, and draw a line on that side. I'm making it dark because obviously during this process, I do a lot of little lines and I wanna make sure that my guide is very clear. Okay, so this is the square. We've done it, we found it. I'm happy, are you happy? So here comes the hard part. Um, we are going to line this up perfectly. We are lining it up perfectly and it's good to use a right angle because we want it to be a right angle. Where do we go from? Where do we go from here? No one can save us, save us from keeping clear. Okay, so this is the square. Then we're gonna go in with our X-Acto knife and just trim these little pieces here. We wanna trim them just a little bit. We don't want to, you know, cut anything else. If there's any fuzzies, let's trim them. Just rub your finger along them like I'm doing here. That should get rid of them because we don't wanna run the risk of cutting too far. So here it is. All right, guys, one, two, three. Flip it over, bam, we did it. Okay, so now that we have our mats taken care of, we're going to make the artwork now. So I will say that you could use any type of paper that you wanna use. I am using some smaller poster boards from the Dollar Tree because I want them to be the exact same white. Um, I think I'm gonna like the way that looks, so let's look together. This pack of four 11 by 14 inch poster boards was a dollar, so I just got two. So let's grab one of my mats that I made and just see what it looks like. So this is the glossy side, we don't want that. We want this side. Right now it looks sort of different, which doesn't make any sense to me, seeing as they, they're the exact same thing. I don't know, maybe it's like the angle. Got my words all confused. I am going to put the mat here and then put this on top, and then I'm just going to trace where my drawing actually is gonna be, um, just like so I know I'm gonna do this for all of them because I'm not cutting anything out. I'm just gonna put this 11 by 14 in there because it's honestly just easier that way. So I've traced it out, nice. Set it to the side. Now I'm gonna talk to you about artwork. So RH is really famous for artwork that looks like squiggly lines. I'll put a picture of it up on the screen right now. So I'm gonna show you how to make that. And then also someone, something that one of you sent me on IG is you sent me some Rorschach test art. So if you don't know what that is, it's like when you go to the psychologist or psychiatrist and they show you like those pictures and you're supposed to interpret them. That is a loose description of what it is. Um, so there's also art like that. So I'm gonna show you how to do both. But now I'm gonna show you how to do this. So you should get like a palette or something to put your paint on something that I do, which is a faux pas, is I actually stick my brush in there so that I don't take out, take out too much paint and so I don't waste any. But to do the squiggly lines, it's pretty self-explanatory. This is how I feel always about abstract art and modern art. When I'm making it for myself or when I'm showing you how to do it, it's kind of just like, 
just doing it. Um, you don't always feel the most confident, but if you go with it and you kind of just like feel through the art, um, you're gonna figure it out. So you can always use a photo for reference, but honestly, I think that makes it look worse because you're trying so hard to like do the same angles as the artist that doesn't work. And also this is your art, so like make your own. So um, what I do since I use the pointing brushes is I really try to apply some pressure um, because I don't want it to look like um, I ran out of ink or um, paint. When they do these pictures, at least at Anthropology, I'm not sure about RH, but they're using watercolor, which I'm not using because I don't like to work with watercolor. So we want to get that effect a little bit, but not a lot. So I'm just going to start here by randomly going around here. When I run out of paint, I'm going right back in and I'm going right back over that spot because I don't want to see that. And you want to avoid harsh edges like that, like I just did. So you're just gonna have to come through, apply pressure when necessary, and it's really important to trace out the line like I did because you don't wanna do all this art and then it go off the page because that's like, then you're not gonna be able to see it. So you don't want to paint on this side because this is the glossy side, but if you want to do a test that looks like a Rorschach, um, I mean, art that looks like a Rorschach test, what you're going to do is you're going to grab a bunch of paint and then on one side you're going to do some type of pattern. So maybe I'll do that and you want to use ample paint and then let's do that and maybe that. Okay, so I've done that. Then. I am going to fold my paper so that the sides touch, but I don't want to try and I don't want to crease it if I don't have to. I just want to crease it a little bit because obviously I want there to not be a line when I frame it. So I push everything down and now I'm going to open it up and then you have the same thing on both sides. It looks kind of like, um, it looks like a Rorschach test, that's what it looks like, but that's how you would do it. Um, and once it's dry, what I would do is I would just set a book on it um, to get that crease out and that's about it. Instead of trying to draw things on both sides, that is the perfect way to do it. But let me do the rest of mine and then we'll frame them together. So my paintings are done drying now. This is what they all look like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to tape the artwork. I'm just running my hand over it to make sure that it's actually dry because I don't wanna ruin my frames. But I'm going to tape the mat to the artwork to ensure that the artwork doesn't slip once I put it in the frame because that is the worst. Perfect. Then, oh, then I am laying the acrylic down like that. You see her? Then I am going to flip it over, put it in the frame here. Hopefully you can see me. I'm really bad at staying in the camera, even though obviously I make a lot of YouTube videos. 
But this is what it looks like. Oh, it looks good. 1075 everyone right here we got five more to go and then i'm going to show you where we're going to hang them and then that will be it so i'm glad i was able to show you how to not only frame them but to how to actually make the art okay guys so this is what they look all laid out and in the frames i'm very happy with them um, these makeshift mats really work for me um, and i love how cheap they were Okay guys, so it's the next morning. If you saw my one of my most recent videos, you know that I did this huge art piece and we wanted to do something to complement it. So this is what the art from last night looks like. Let's give you a little close up here. You can see, oh, the glare is bad. Let's see how I can fix it. Right here, you can see like the um, mat and then the painting in the middle, same thing up there and then we have our beautiful louis philippe gilt mirror and then the same paintings on the other side you should be able to see the mat if not i'll put down the window and show it to you like that let me try that i have the dog in my hands right now because he wouldn't stop squeaking a ball long enough for me to um make this video for you and i don't like to stifle him so then i just rewarded him with love instead like it because it gives it a more finished look but if you always have windows open and don't like the glare you don't have to put the acrylic in i would then suggest you just use like a thicker paper so that the frames do look full and then this is the side angle oh i just nicked this and flipped it over here for those of you who ask me this all the time these are the ipper league lamps from ikea they are amazing sometimes they're out of stock but they're really good but this is the final look i'm so happy with it we're gonna do pi two picture lights eventually. I have a huge one for up there, but we just haven't had the time to like get all the way up there close to the ceiling. But that is it for today's video. If you liked it, be sure to let me know in the comments, like this video. Also subscribe to my channel and check me out on Instagram at kiva.brent. I'm going to be doing videos like this all week because again, we're preparing for the dining tables. Until next time, have a beautiful day.